Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from the upcoming production of Weird Sisters at Dreamwell Theater. Nicole Flint. Nicole, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. And Josh Cezanne, who was here just a couple of weeks ago talking about the Cole Porter show. Oh. And uh, that has been coincident with you directing this production as well. Welcome back. Thank you. It's Josh Month here on KCCK. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, first off, before we get too much further, uh, geek trigger warning, as uh, the source material upon which this uh, play is based is a uh, favorite series of mine going uh, going way, way back. Um, so if, uh, if that doesn't mean anything to you, if Terry Pratchett doesn't mean anything to you, then perhaps uh, if you enjoyed the Amazon Prime series, Good Omens, mm -hmm. that, that might uh, perhaps tickle your awareness a little bit if you ever heard or used the phrase turtles all the way down that would <laughs> that that would also be a be a part of this or if you or if you think uh a uh macbeth pastiche pastiche might be fun all of this so so i guess that's by way of by way of intro and disclaimer <laughs> so <laughs> so the weird sis this is taken from a big long series of books by the great terry pratchett uh called discworld right and there are, God, how, there are like 60 of them. Oh, not quite. Yeah. There are about 40 of them. Uh, Pratchett passed away a couple of years back, so I think that was as far as he got. Uh, and they, you know, they, they all are different characters, different stories. And this particular one kind of uses Macbeth, more or less, as the source material. Yes. Right. He has a, a trio of witches, which is sort of a recurring characters. And I think this was the first novel where they appeared. And yes, it is a pastiche of Macbeth and all things Shakespearean. You can find some, uh, a dollop of Richard III in there, some Hamlet, uh, Ghosts of Dead Kings. Uh, what else is there? You name it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Nicole, you're one of the witches. I am. I'm Na Nanny Og. Nanny Og. So did you come into this with uh, any knowledge of the source material? Not of the Pratchett. I admit I have had never read any of the Disc... Move just a little closer to the mic. I'd never read any of the Discworld novels before, but um, as a former English professor, I was <laughs> <laughs> fairly familiar with the with the Shakespeare references and um, knew of Pratchett, obviously. But um, yes, I thought couldn't resist playing a witch <laughs> in October if I had the opportunity. Um, Always fun to work with a team of women and and good humor. And yeah, 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 and perfectly timed for Halloween. Yes. Um. So, Josh, there, you know, there are. You remark there are, you know, more than one adaptation of different, you know, Pratchett works out there, uh, for plays. Uh, but it is not common for a fantasy novel to be transformed into a play to, you know, not terribly no, common. No, so tell me not. about the adaptation to start with. Well, this was a first in a series of adaptations that was done in the UK. Actually, it was done by um, what they call Amdram, Amateur Dramatics, or essentially community theater. And so there have been, I think, about seven plays at this point that uh, had been adapted. Um, probably one of the best known are, two of them are Guards Guards, for those who are familiar with Pratchett, and uh, Mort, which is a story about death. And hopefully if this flies, uh, maybe for next Halloween, we'll try to do Mort. Um, it, it matches very nicely with the, uh, with the, uh, with the month, actually. Uh, and uh, then the but the story it's a little it's the the story is is a little bit easier since it's since it's a send up of Macbeth it's a little bit easier to to bring you know bring an audience not familiar with the rest of the work into it right um, it's especially useful because uh, for the last couple of months there have been three productions of Macbeth <laughs> in the area yeah with, within a thirty mile radius right. of where we're sitting right now true. So anyone who really wants to catch all of the jokes of Weird Sisters, there is actually a production of Macbeth uh, going up at the uh, 
University of Iowa Theater Department. That's a plug for you, UI. <laughs> uh, and it's actually, I think, running about the same time as we are. So, you know, go for the original, then come for the pastiche, I We're think. the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Nicole, tell me about your, you know, first encounter then. So you said as a as a uh, lit professor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, very familiar with the, with the Shakespeare end of yes. the source and material. General Anglophile, um, but... Uh, Yes, after I was uh, graciously cast in the show, I dug into the Witch series so you can kind of dip in and out of Discworld wherever you want. So I started um, with Weird Sisters, which is the first that all three, and then read around it a little to kind of find out more about my character and, and, and the sort of backstory. But um, yes, found myself laughing out loud alone <laughs> <laughs> so, quite often. <laughs> so tell me about Nanny Og. Yeah, so she's sort of the Earth Mother Witch. <laughs> she's been married several times, 14 children, um, is now sort of in her late life leisure, lets all her daughters-in-law <laughs> bring her breakfast and clean her house and so forth. Um, but she is very funny. I was saying to the witch that Granny Weatherwax, um, played by Madonna, it, that she gets all the lines, but I get I get all the silent funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of physical humor for her, a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, and it's you know it's been a while since I've since I've read the book. Is the uh, is the book itself also a take on Macbeth in particular and Shakespeare in general, or is that something fairly that it, the weird sisters yeah, novel? Yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of the the main thread through it, but um it kind of flies off in various different directions and develops its own little plot twist like my cat missing and things like that. <laughs> Were you surprised as you dove into it to discover that uh Pratchett reached out and uh and and in tagged other Shakespeare works as things went. He was like, oh, yes. oh, I wasn't expecting, <laughs> I wasn't expecting Richard III. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of little chestnuts in there, even for people who aren't huge fans of Discworld or have never even heard of it. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely many Easter eggs mm. tucked in there for, for those who are fans of various things from Shakespeare to fantasy. Josh, as a director, any any anything anything particularly challenging in uh, bringing this work to life? Yeah, there are a couple of things. Uh, one, Pratchett can be terribly philosophical uh, as well as funny, and part of the challenge of this is bringing those nice little nuggets that he brings in. It's a very chatty work, and it's very easy to just sort of get lost in the. Uh, in the in the dialogue of it all so just trying to emphasize which parts we can actually punch up and um and emphasize the other thing and this is a an interesting conversation i've had with my stage manager is um being able to follow the plot of this <laughs> uh of this of this particular piece because it uh, a big chunk of that plot runs across um a a quaint medieval custom that apparently most people don't know about. Um, I hate to say it, I actually knew what they were talking about when they <laughs> when they had mentioned that, and I just didn't think that, oh, no, this is not common knowledge. Oh, gosh, that's, that's not something normal people know. <laughs> yeah, yes, um, it's, it's terribly embarrassing. Uh, it's hard to footnote a play. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, my, my, uh, my stage manager and I have been having a little bit of a tug of war is, should we actually put a, a glossary of, no, no, we don't. No, you don't have to do homework to enjoy the play. But that's, We're going to need super titles. Yeah. <laughs> essentially. But that, that's, uh, that's up to, well, the director and the actors to be able to bring forth that, uh, the meaning of that without being terribly obvious. And I know I'm being coy about that particular plot. Obviously, point, but... it's a little, spo a little spoilery. Yeah, so but, so but... We'll, we'll stay away from that for a bit. But I'm, but I'm sure that you have figured out a way to make sure that <laughs> everybody appreciates the joke. Yes, I have to say Josh is uh, masterful at, at pulling out the humor from every possible moment. I mean, we were cracking ourselves up on the first read. It was already mm. a very funny script. But every single night he finds one little way extra to kind of draw out the humor. It's it 
it's going to be hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> uh, Nicole, do you have a favorite moment in the show? Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, I have a favorite prop. Nanny oh, likes okay. to carry a hip flask around <laughs> nice. and sample at, at key moments. So, um, But in general, my favorite part is just the three witches together. Their dynamic is delightful. The play is Weird Sisters with Dreamwell Theater going up at the James in Iowa City. Um, I've The James has been used a lot here lately with a lot of different uh, configurations. Right. Uh, how are you setting things up? This is probably closer to a proscenium-style staging. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, October 12th through the 14th. Yes. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, tickets available at the James website, I suspect. They are. And I bet you could also, and which is jamesic.com. Well, you're better at it than I am. Well, like I said, there have been, there've been a few shows. Been busy. Okay. <laughs> there have been a few shows there over the last several weeks. But also you can visit the Dreamwell Theater. Dreamwell.com. Uh, Dreamwell.com if you'd like more information on this. Well, it just, uh, as I said, I have a personal, a lot of affection for this material. So well, it was, I hope you get to see it. Uh, me too. So, <laughs> I, so when so when the email came in saying, hey, we're doing a Terry Pratchett play, it was like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping everyone does the same thing. Yeah. So sounds like a lot of fun. Weird Sisters at uh, the James Theater in Iowa City with Dreamwell Theater on October 12th through the 14th. Good luck with it, and thanks so much for being here. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1030 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast player. I'm Dennis Green. I'll talk to you later.